Oh, sup, you here for Tech News 2? Oh, you are? Oh, no way, man. That's, oh, that's sick. Hey, hey, that's really cool. Hey, hey, that's really cool. NVIDIA's ARM-powered laptop CPU has been rumored to exist for over a year, or at least it feels that way, I haven't checked. But now a Geekbench result has appeared listing a 20-core ARM-based CPU called the NVIDIA N1X, the strongest evidence yet that it is indeed possibly a thing. The Geekbench entry was first spotted by Twitter user Olrak29, but we can't see it because their tweets are protected, and at the time of writing they hadn't accepted my follow request yet. Let me into your life! The N1X makes a pretty good showing too, beating the Ryzen AI Max Plus 395 and the Core Ultra 9 285HX in single core. It lost in multi-core, and keep in mind that Linux systems do a bit better than Windows on Geekbench. But NVIDIA obviously has a bunch of optimization work to do. This is early. I'm sure Team Green's driver team is working on this day and night so that by the time it launches, it won't just run faster. It actually won't run at all. Burn a hole right through your desk. Now that's power. Google is rolling out a stable build of Android 16 to Google Pixel devices, although support for the coolest features aren't coming until later, like the desktop mode and the Material 3 expressive redesign. More like Material 3 excessive compared to Apple's new liquid glass look. I mean, with the colors here. Can you let my eyes breathe for a second? There are other concerns with Android 16 too. The team behind Android Fork Graphene OS apparently received information that Google would make Android no longer open source. And the first step towards this happening would be Google not releasing device repositories for Pixel phones alongside new Android releases. And it looks like that has indeed come to pass, which is especially bad news for Graphene OS, which only officially supports Pixel devices. Now, some are saying the Graphene team is misreading the situation. Google's becoming more private with some elements of Android, but the open source project itself Itself isn't going away, according to these people. Whatever's really happening, closed sourcing Android would not only be pretty dumb when Google's engulfed in antitrust trials, it would be bad for consumers. Like, look, Chinese manufacturer Vivo claims they got their upcoming X Fold 5 to work with the Apple Watch, and they even got it to work as an external monitor for a Mac. Honestly, I don't know whether Android being open source helped with that, but it can't have hurt. OpenAI has made a deal with its biggest rival, Google, for cloud compute power, according to a Reuters report based on three insider sources. That's wild, but hey, AI companies gotta stick together now because Disney and NBC Universal are together suing Midjourney for producing replicas of copyrighted characters like Aladdin and the Minions. Despicable. That was from Glenn. Nice one. So add that one to the pile of AI copyright lawsuits. Hopefully one of them gets decided soon so we can tell whether it's okay that Amazon is about to be overrun with AI generated video ads. Amazon's new tools let brands access AGI. What? Oh, advanced generative intelligence? Ah, come on. Six photorealistic video ads can be generated in minutes and I'm sure AI getting integrated into all of the most used business products makes somebody happy, but it also provides another vector for malware. AIM Security has identified the first known zero-click AI vulnerability, which could let an attacker secretly ask your AI assistant to provide sensitive info just by sending an email to the victim. No killer robots needed. Those will come later thanks to world models like the one Meta just introduced called VJEPA2. It sounds Italian, VJEPA. Meta says it helps AI think before it acts which also sounds like something Meta themselves could do. And maybe the rest of Silicon Valley too. I think we're kind of reaching the limit of uh, move fast and break things. So honestly, Apple deserves some kudos for delaying the launch of the new AI upgraded Siri to 2026. In WWDC interviews this week, software chief Craig Federighi said, there's no need to rush the wrong product out just to be first. Now he just needs to apply that same approach to product demos like the one they did at WWDC 2024 for this 2026 product. You wanna see a 2028 product? Then check out our sponsor. Charge and their Pixel 100, a super fast GAN charger that adds some funkiness to its functional clean design with a customizable smart dot matrix display that tells you how much juice is flowing through its ports. Delicious. 
Each of its three USB-C ports can deliver a max output of 100 watts. So in just 30 minutes, the Pixel 100 can charge a 14 inch MacBook Pro to 50% or an iPhone 16 to 55%. And there's an additional USB-A port, so no need for extra wall plugs. Plus it's super compact, it's tiny, and uses fifth gen GAN technology to minimize heat buildup. But that doesn't mean it's not hot in terms of uh, vibes. Hey, check out the Charge Pixel 100 at the link in the description. So, oh, you're you're here for the quick bits too? Uh, okay, I, I didn't think I'd see you again. Uh, this is awkward. <laughs> the Nintendo Switch 2 appears to be the fastest selling video game console of all time after selling three and a half million units in its first four days. Now I say appears to be because the Switch 2 apparently also has a battery bug that makes it lie to you about how much charge you have left. And now I don't know who to trust. Thankfully, there's an official support article that should help, while unofficial developers are also working on a micro SD to M.2 adapter for the Switch 2, which could massively expand storage. However, there are apparently some power issues they need to work out, so be aware of that unless you wanna beat Nintendo to bricking your console. US and Chinese representatives have agreed on a proposal that could reduce planned tariffs and perhaps even more importantly, ease Chinese restrictions on the export of rare earth minerals, which are needed to make everything from Jeep Grand Cherokees to grandma's pancakes. They always had a little something extra. Unfortunately, despite Trump shouting on Truth Social in all caps about how the deal with China is done, the specific details of the proposal haven't been released as both Trump and Chinese President Xi have yet to sign off on the deal, which is done, by the way, you, you may have missed that. Owners of EVGA motherboards have turned to a farm boy fix for the boot up problems they've been experiencing with RTX 50 series GPUs. Just put some type on it. That apparently prevents contact with the extra SM bus pins on a number of EVGA motherboards, which I'm assuming in the wake of the company swearing off ever making NVIDIA GPUs again, EVGA put there to sabotage GPUs out of spite. Ooh, Jensen will hate this. The first Google Beam compatible hardware has been revealed. The HP Dimension has six cameras, a spatial audio system and adaptive lighting to make it seem like you're really in the room with your company's HR manager. What, what you thought you were gonna call your grandma on this thing? It's $25,000. But it is cool, and if you don't think so, uh, you can take Google's buyout offer and leave. Is that open to everyone, or just Google employees? Okay, <laughs> typical corporate <laughs> And humanoid robots are coming up in a big way, but a company called Ground Control Robotics had a different idea. What if we make farming robots that look like horrifying giant centipedes? They could writhe and crawl around and slap their gross long bodies on stuff to make everyone uncomfortable. This <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, they made an armored version with actual antenna. Is that necessary? They say it can be used to pull out weeds and stuff, but it's having trouble with this one. And that's not even the only horrifying crawly thing these people are making. They should be ashamed of themselves. Just like you should be if you don't come back on Friday for tech news. I wasn't sure about you being here at first, but now I've gotten used to your calming presence. You make me feel better about myself, goddammit.